What's going on mobile gamers? Today I'm going to show you guys how to play some Sega Saturn on your Odin 2. Let's jump in level up our gaming knowledge. So today we're going to learn how to play Sega Saturn on the go with our Odin 2. First thing we're going to do is we're going to download two files. The first one is going to be in the link in the description below. It's called Saturn Files. It's going to be in the form of a zip file. I have mine saved into my Sega Saturn folder on my external SD card. Now you can run your games off your external SD card or your internal SD card. That's all up to you. Now the Saturn Files folder is going to be in the form of a zip. You're going to click on it. You're going to long press on the Saturn Files folder. Click the three dots. Click Extract to. Click the three lines, scroll down to the folder that you want to put it in. Mine is going to be in my Sega Saturn folder. I'm going to extract those files in here. Next, we're going to go to Google Chrome. We're going to go to the new tab. We're going to type in RetroArch. So R-E-T-R-O, Arch, just like so. You're going to open up RetroArch's website. You're going to scroll all the way down to download. Click the X on the actual ad. Go down to where it says cross-platform detected OS is Android. And if it doesn't detect your OS, then just refresh the site. Click download stable and let it download. This takes a few minutes depending on your internet speed. Mine is going to take about 15 seconds. Once that is downloaded, we're going to click on it. Now your settings might pop up saying that you need to enable these settings to install unknown apps. So click settings, click allow from this source, click install, click open, click OK, click allow. Now let it do its thing. Now that that's all done, this has written a folder to your internal storage on your device that'll stay there unless you delete that folder. I'm gonna show you where that folder is right now. We're gonna to go to our file manager. We're gonna to go to our Odin 2. We're gonna scroll all the way down until you see a folder called RetroArch, just like so. Now that you found that folder, we're gonna copy all the folders that we extracted from the beginning of the video. In our Saturn Files folder, we're going to highlight the one folder until you see a checkbox. Click the three dots, click Select All. Click the three dots again, click Copy To. Go to the three lines, go to your Odin 2. Go all the way down to your RetroArch folder. Go down to System. Copy those files inside that System folder. Click the three lines, go to your Odin 2. Go down to RetroArch. Go to System. And make sure that all of those files have been copied successfully, as you can see here. Now, what those files are doing are just helping the core that we're going to be downloading in a second to actually run. That's the first thing we're going to do. So if you have your settings on your actual physical device set up to the Odin controller, your A button is going to be your B button and your B button is going to be your A button. So get used to that for now. Go to load core, go to download core. Now I'm going to select up, 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 and I'm going to keep going up until I see Sega. Beetle Saturn, which is right here. I'm going to click B, which is my A button, to actually load it and install it. If you get an error, that just means you have to try again and try to download it from their server. Click back. Go over to Import Content. This is where we're going to import our games folder. So click B or A, the A button. Scan directory. We can just touch the screen as well if you want. Now, I'm going to show you where your main folder is and your external SD card is. Your main folder is your emulated forward slash zero. Your external SD card will be a hexadecimal. It'll be different numbers usually than what I have on screen here. So since mine is on my external SD card, I'm going to click on that. I'm going to scroll down to my Sega Saturn folder. I'm going to go to my games and I'm going to click scan this directory. Now let it do its thing and then go back. Now that I'm done, click the back arrow, click the back arrow again, click it again, keep going, keep going. And now we're out of that actual import content. Scroll all the way down to the bottom. We'll see all of our games loading here. Images will load. There they go. Images load a little bit slower than maybe you'd like, but there they go. Now we're going to scroll over. We're going to go to user interface. We're going to click on on-screen display, on-screen overlay, and we're going to click on the first checkbox. So that checkbox is off. What this is doing is turning off that on-screen overlay for our on-screen buttons and i don't like those on it's all up to your preference but if you want to turn those off then that's how you do it go back go back go back go back again now i'm going to go over to my input which is at the bottom here and i'm going to go to hotkeys i'm going to scroll down and i'm going to set my menu toggle button to be my m1 button which is on the back by holding it until it's done 
I'm going to set up a fast forward button as well. There's a whole bunch of other buttons here if you want to actually use them, but I'm just going to set my fast forward to my M2 button, just like so. Your retro pad binds. I'm not going to set this up just for the sake of not confusing you guys, but this is where if you wanted to swap your B for your A and your B A for your B, that's where you would do it. But don't do that right now because this part's going to be where we set up our controller when we actually load the game. So still in our settings, we're going to go to video. We're going to go to scaling. I'm going to set my aspect ratio to 16 by 9. Now this is all up to preference again. Integer overscale, I'm going to check, box that, check that on as well. I'm going to click back. Click back again. And now I'm going to scroll over to where it says main menu. I'm going to go down to where it says configuration file. I'm going to save my configuration file. So I'm going to click save current configuration. Now what that's doing is overriding that retroarch.config file. If you wanted to save as a new configuration file, you can click save new configuration file and it'll save it based off the date and time that you just saved it. So if we go into our retroarch folder, so we go to our Odin 2, go down to our retroarch, go to config, there's our configuration file right there. That is very helpful if you've accidentally like uninstalled your application or something and backed up your configuration file like I have to actually let you guys download if you want to use it so that you don't have to go through all this process. Then that's where that configuration file is. Now I'm going to go back into RetroArch. I'm going to go back. I'm going to load that core for the very first time. So what I do is click load core, select the core. And now that it's loaded, you'll see it at the top on the left hand side. Now we're going to actually load one of our games. We're going to load up Gex. I'm going to click A. I'm going to click run. I'm going to click A again. Keep clicking A until it actually loads up. Now we're going to click on our hotkey, which is our menu button or our M1 button on the back. I'm going to go over to settings. I'm going to go over. So I click the settings cog. I'm going to go over to quick menu. I'm going to scroll all the way down to where it says controls. I'm going to go to port one controls. Now your D-pad up, down, left, and right is already set up. Your B, A, Y, X buttons. That are That is all these buttons right here. I put on the screen the actual controller for Sega Saturn. If you see how it's laid out, we have our three on the bottom and our three on the top. So what I like to do, I like to set my B button as my actual B button. My A button is going to be my C button. So you just click on it and then scroll down until you see your C. My Y button is going to be my A button. So we have A, B, C. X button is going to be my X button. So X is X. So sorry, X is actually going to be my Y, um, the Y button. So the Y, X, Y, Z is at the top. Now for my X button, I'm going to use L1. So I'm going to go down to where it says X button. So my L1. R1 is going to be my Z button. So Z. So we have X, Y, Z, and then A, B, C. Now your L2 is going to be your L button on the controller and your R2 is going to be your R button on the controller. The rest you don't really need to set up. That is all up to preference again, like I said. Now if you want to use your analog to digital, you can use your left analog. And that just enables your joystick to actually work. Click back. Click back again. Now this is where you're going to see your save states. Save states allow you to just save your game where you're currently located. So click on save states. Now you can select the slot that you want to actually save it to. I'm going to select slot one. Actually, no, I'm going to select slot four. And I'm going to click save state. Now this is going to save the state based off of where I am right now. So if I click my hotkey and load that state, it's going to load that slot one. Now if I change my slot to slot zero, and load a state, there's nothing in there. So it's not going to load anything. So we got to select slot four again, click load state, and there's that menu loading up. I'm going to click the fast forward button that I set to my hotkey on the right hand side. So that I can navigate through this entire intro screen. Now, fixing your graphics a little bit. Again, like I said, this is all game dependent. Some games have this black border. A lot of them do. So with the settings that I set up at least, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my settings cog. I'm going to go to video. I'm going to go to scaling. Now I can set it to integer scale just like so. Go back to my settings. 
Now I'm going to go down to where it says configuration. Now this is where you're going to see save configuration on quit. So that is going to be when you actually quit the entire thing, like the entire application, which is RetroArch. I want to save that configuration file so that it makes sure that it saves it so that I don't lose any of this information. Because if you end up going like this and click the home button, that configuration file does not save properly if you swiped out of the game. So go back to play, click start, click start again. And I'm going to click the fast forward button so we can actually get into the game. A is to actually navigate into the, the worlds if you've ever played Gex. And I'm going to turn off my fast forward. And again, here we go. So we're playing the game. The game's running great. Hope you enjoy. Hope that was helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to comment if you have any questions because this version of Sega Saturn plays really, really well. And I never thought I'd be playing Sega Saturn in 2023. On my Odin 2, on the go. Bye-bye!